Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar, taking a look at advanced compression techniques inside Apple's Compressor 4. You know, the default settings for compressor are fine, but once you understand how some of the more advanced stuff works, you can get a ton of work done in a very short period of time. And showing you some of those advanced techniques, that's the purpose of today's webinar. Now, if you want to learn compressor, I suggest you start with Webinar 78, which is video compression for the web. That talks about the basics like the interface and creating custom settings. It's available in my store and it's available in our subscription library. This webinar assumes that you've got some basic familiarity with Compressor 4. What I want to talk about today is to show you how to modify destinations and preference settings, how to use the history panel and share monitor, how to compress for ProRes and Blu-ray disc, how to use the geometry tab to scale and crop, how to use frame controls to change frame rates, how to use job chaining for faster performance, and how to create and use clusters effectively. One of the common uses we have of compressors, we want to convert a file from, say, H.264 into ProRes. Now, we can't convert files which are not movie files. AVC HD comes first to mind. But if it's already a movie file, but we want to change the codec, because we want greater efficiency or we want more flexibility in color grading, transcoding to ProRes makes a lot of sense. This is especially true if you're editing in, in Adobe Premiere, which doesn't have its own transcode format. Transcoding to ProRes, if you're editing in Premiere on, on a Macintosh, can actually solve a lot of problems, even though Premiere is accelerated for the GPU. So how do we do this transcode? Well, let's load ourselves a file here. Mm -hmm. We'll click the Add File button. I've got a bunch of movies stored on my desktop. And let's, um, well, let's transcode Bighorn Sheep. And we'll click on it. And we see here a sheep. We're watching it. It's watching us. Keep an eye on this there, guy. OK, let's pretend that I don't know what the codec is for this video. It happens to be DV, but we'll pretend that we don't know. Let's pretend that we don't know what the frame rate is. What we want to do in transcoding is we don't want to change the image size. We don't want to change the frame rate. All we want to do is convert it from one codec to another. Because ProRes is a really ideal video codec for the Mac, let's just search for ProRes. I'll just type in ProRes, P-R-O. And we've got all the different ProRes varieties here. If you're using a really high-end camera with really high-quality lenses and you're taking the time to both focus and light, transcoding to ProRes 422 HQ is a good idea because you'll retain all that quality that you're putting in. If you're doing run-and-gun shooting with a zoom lens with a camera that costs less than, say, $20,000, you probably are not going to notice any difference between ProRes 422 and ProRes 422 HQ. So my general recommendation for most transcoding is to use ProRes 422. The file sizes are smaller. It's still a very efficient codec. So I'm going to grab that setting and drag up here. One of the things that I did in Webinar 78 is I spent a lot of time talking about how to change compression settings. We're not going to spend any time with compression settings in today's webinar because we're looking at a bunch of other stuff. So whether you want to transcode into ProRes or AVC Intra or uncompressed 10-bit for SD, it really doesn't make any difference. The process is find the compression setting you want to use, drag it on top of the clip. Here's where it starts to become more interesting. When you click on the compression setting, not the clip, because when you click on the clip, we don't have any options inside the inspector. You have to click on the compression setting. These are the six tabs that control what you're going to end up with. And this is really an important point. You never, ever, ever worry about what your source video is, the source video format, the frame rate, none of that stuff. When you're compressing or transcoding, you always worry about what you want to turn it into, not what you're starting with. In this particular case, we're going to turn it into a ProRes file. The compression is coordinated under the encoder tab. Frame rate conversions and deinterlacing is under frame controls. And the geometry tab controls the size. So let's take a look at these settings. First, notice that audio is set to pass through. What that means is we're going to take the audio in whatever form it is and pass it straight through to the, to the transcode. We're not going to make any changes to the audio. This is ideal because now you're going to take the audio in the same form. You're just copying it across. Streaming should be set to none. You don't want to add any streaming hints. This is a transcode. You're not compressing for the web. 
When you go to video settings, you want to make sure frame rate is set to current. What that does is it takes whatever the frame rate is of the source footage and makes it the frame rate of the transcoded footage. So we're passing through audio, making no changes. We're passing through frame rate, making no changes. Then we go to the geometry tab and we make sure the frame size is set to 100% of source. We're not making any changes to the source. So the image size remains the same, the frame rate remains the same, the audio remains the same. All we're changing is the codec, the mathematical way of describing a video from one form, H.264, into another form, in this case Apple ProRes. Transcoding is the process of converting a file from one format to another and making as few changes as possible during that transcode operation. That's different than compression, where we want to change the file size to make it really tiny. In transcoding, we want to have it opened up into a, in a more efficient codec that gives us access to greater color space and faster render, faster output. But we don't want to start compression too early. If you need to stretch your training dollars, the subscription membership to our video training library can save you money. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 500 movies, dozens of hours of training, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Adobe and Apple software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on advanced compression tips inside Apple's Compressor 4. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at LarryJordan.biz slash store. And look for Webinar 96.